Well now, the holidays are officially over. 2016 is in full effect, thank God. I think it's gonna be a really good year. And I've really been focused hard on my Christmas break of thinking about a full training plan for 2016 in terms of survival training, right? So I started to think about my Urban Survival Series. Now, I know that I had talked about doing a review of my Urban Survival Kit, and then, you know, once I started poking around YouTube, I realized, like, there is a ton of you know survival kit reviews out there just they're just all over the place so why clog up YouTube with another review right now so I'm just gonna push that off down the road whenever I feel like doing it so what I wanted to do something more practical and at least for me and hopefully you guys will learn something from it as well is talking about caching preparing a cache placing a cache sanitizing the site and all the techniques and procedures that go into that process now over the past six months I've spent a extraordinary huge amount of time planning an escape route, egress route out of the city from my house. Now, the distance to travel is fairly far to my remain overnight or Ron position outside the city. Now, in a, if I'm on foot and I'm trying to escape the city, bad things have happened. I could end up expending ammo. I could end up losing equipment. Who knows? So I want to have myself a mini redundancy cache. Now, this isn't a full-blown cache, but it's enough of the basics that I think can get me back in the game and get me out of the city to my rally point to my you know little escape area right so that's what I started thinking about so that's going to be the focus of this video urban caching placing a cache along my egress route we're going to go through all the steps that go behind selecting the site digging the site um, getting the cache in there sanitizing the area and getting out of there without being seen now let's talk caching strategies based on my own experience and what I've read, there's a few key things to remember. Now, first of all, you gotta define what the cache is about. What is its purpose, right? That dictates what actually goes into it. Now, at this stage in time, you already know what your cache is for. Maybe it's just a resupply cache. Maybe it's a full-blown redundancy cache with weapons and ammo and all that kind of good stuff. Whatever the case is, now that you've defined that, then you have to go through the process of acquiring those items or going, going through your own gear, inventorying what you can uh, you know, do without and so on and so forth. And then finally, site selection. You gotta figure out where to bury this, right? You gotta figure out a good route in, another route out of the site. You gotta define your site security. You gotta have cover. On really, in a lot of areas when you're actually doing the dig, if you're doing it by yourself, you don't want somebody to creep up on you unannounced. Um, you gotta think about the type of soil you're digging in. You gotta think about where you're gonna locate it. Obviously, you're not gonna put it at the bottom of a ravine because all the water is gonna drain downhill and soak your cache. So, those are a few points to consider. Kind of the main points in my mind, but check out the link at the bottom of the video in the description and you can get into more details on the process. Now on to the next consideration. How secure is my site? What kind of obstacles might arise in the future that would prevent me access to this site? For example, you might think an abandoned house might be a good place to put a cache, but you know, you have no idea what's gonna happen to that house in the future. You know, local land developer comes through there, takes the house down and uh, builds, builds an apartment complex and you come back one day to get your cash and it's not going to happen for you. In my case, I'm not concerned about that because my egress route literally follows power line clearings pretty much all the way out of the city. So that area is very well controlled by the city. Nobody's going to build in that general vicinity and I feel pretty safe and confident placing a cash there. As long as I can make a good reference point. I would like to have two points of reference, but one point of reference is probably going to work okay for me. Now the final consideration is concealment. How am I going to hide this cache? Am I just going to, you know, tuck it up underneath uh, some fallen trees and try and disguise it? Or am I actually going to get really serious about it and bury it in the ground? And if I'm going to do that, how am I going to disguise the um, evidence of digging? How am I going to get the dirt out of the area? Things of those, things like that, you got to think ahead and consider because once you get down to placing the cache, it needs to be quick, efficient, get in and get back out. All right, guys, so I spent about the last 15 to 20 minutes poking around this general vicinity on my exit route trying to find a good site, and I think I've located one. Now, remember I talked about reference points? I wanted to have a good reference point, and, of course, I have it with that power line um, tower back there. That's not going anywhere anytime in the foreseeable future, so I got a really good, solid point of reference. Now what I'm going to do, grab my compass, paper and pen, and pace off from the power line tower to the actual site 
double check my notes, make sure everything's recorded so I can get back here easily or somebody else can get here easily just by reading my notes. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done and I'll check back with you guys in a minute and we'll go ahead and do the dig. Okay, now we're back on the tree line. I've got this all measured, paced out, recorded, whole nine yards. I got my little treasure map. It's done, right? So now we dig. You see what I like to do here? I like to pull out this first top part if I can. Kind of like a plug. Wow, wow, that's a workout and a half. I've been doing this digging maybe about 15 minutes. I got a decent sized hole dug, you know, but one thing I wanted to mention and tell you guys before I go ahead and place this is the fact that the soil, like I mentioned earlier, makes a huge difference. Now in Florida when I would do caches, man, the soil is very easy to dig with, very easy to work with. Here, we got stuff like this. Lots and lots of red clay. Now, that makes, now that makes for uh, the whole process of digging a little more difficult now thankfully it doesn't get super super cold here so i'm not too worried about like the ground freezing terribly so i don't think i have to dig down super deep with deep with this cache it's going to be about a foot down i think that's good enough so i'm going to go ahead and uh get this buried in here we'll sanitize the site and get the hell out of here Now you'll note I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time like putting the dirt around here and all this other kind of stuff because this stuff is going to fill in anyways over time. So by the time I come back here, I don't want it to be super difficult. So I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time packing a bunch of dirt in here. The only thing I'm really going to focus on is get some dirt over top of it like so. All right, so you guys remember that plug of dirt I took out originally. Now that I got this nice and covered up, I'm going to go ahead and put this back in. Measure this here and see how well we can get this thing to blend back in to the natural landscape here. All right, so we got it in the ground, got it decently concealed. My next concern, and then we can hit the road, is dealing with all the dirt that's left over from the dig, right? So the concern is to deal with all this red clay. Obviously, I'm not gonna leave it at the site. That's why I got this trash bag underneath it. And to be honest with you, I wish I would have had some 55 gallon bags, but it is what it is. We're gonna wrap this dirt up and haul it out of this area and then leave everything nicely sanitized. Nobody would even know we were here. Well, another good lesson learned. Alright, so there's the site. Nice and sanitized. I got a giant 50 pound bag of uh, red clay in my backpack. And I think it's about time to hit the road. <clears throat> Alright, so it's a wrap. Got it in the ground. Site's nice and sanitized. And it's time for me to get on the road. I am freaking exhausted. You know, the actual timeline site to get this done was about an hour, which I don't think is too bad considering the soil I was dealing with. But the actual whole process of doing this has a two mile hike into the site. And now I'm facing a two mile hike back out. So um, I got to get on the road because the sun's going down. But, uh, anyways, guys, pretty much the name of the game. The next move is going to be coming back here around the beginning of spring 
and digging this up and seeing what it looks like, making sure all the contents are good to go. And to be honest with you, I thought a lot about how deep I wanted to dig the hole. And, you know, I thought, what if I came out here, and I dug this hole super deep, and I come out here with no digging implements, right? And I'm digging with my freaking hands for hours on end to go, to go down multiple feet to get to this cache. So I only put it down about a foot. Now, we'll see how that goes. Um, hopefully it goes well, but, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll obviously check on the cache between now and the time that we dig it up. So, you know, this is a, uh, this is a real cache operation, but it's also an experiment because I haven't done a cache like this uh for years on ends and it's definitely been in a different environment so a couple takeaways right off the bat is the fact that i wish i brought bigger trash bags out there and look at my pack i mean seriously have a look again it's slam packed full of clay and i didn't think i'd be able to fit it all in there now it's, the damn pack is so heavy it's got to weigh at least 50 pounds it's digging into my damn shoulder so i gotta get the hell out of here so you know it's been a good learning experience i'll be writing up an after action report on this for the blog in the meantime you guys get out there and train, you know the deal, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace.